Hello there, welcome to another episode of World of Tanks of Dungany Titan, and we're here in Kazarin Pass with the E75, and it's one of the other games that I had on the path to Elite in the E75, making, uh, unlocking the E100. So most of the tier 9 tanks that I started out with, uh, what, a month or two ago, are now Elite, so they're just the uh, M46 Patton and the T10 left. Now, and it's not been... It's certainly been a lot easier than the grinds that I did years ago when I got out my first batch of tier, um, tier 10 tanks. That Some of them said, well, the Conqueror was definitely felt the longest. And the Conqueror was probably the only one that I did in one go, in the sense that I started grinding out the Conqueror and kept at it until I had done. Uh, the ST1, for instance, I would play it for a few games over the course of about... Two, two years. Um, what am I on? World of Tanks now. Be five years, I suppose. Next. Um, good God, as the time flies. It'll probably be five years next spring um, since I started World of Tanks. And it'll be, it'll be four years next summer since I started YouTubing. So, um, the ST1 was probably ground, ground out over a space of several years uh, by just hitting it in fairly small doses when I got. Uh, fed up with doing other things, I would take out my Russian tanks and go at it a bit more, and I suppose it helped, it's a very good tank, it's a very well armoured tank anyway and the other thing was that I had a really good crew on it because um, the Russian tanks were my go-to tanks Russian premiums, the KV-5, the IS-6 for a long time were my go-to making money tanks um, I was almost guaranteed to make money on those tanks so whenever I ran out of silver I would be grinding out the uh, IS-6 and the KV-5 and I will be using my best Russian tank crews on them. So the ST-1 crew were generally the best crew and they bear up to I don't know, 12 skills or probably more. Um, I haven't used them as much re more recently because I've been trying to grind out extra skills on lower tier crews. I think at tier 9 and 10 you can probably get away with a 6 or 7 skill crew. Um, but anything like that, anything below that, it's a painful experience indeed because the couple of seconds reload and stuff like that, that Brothers and Arms gives you the, um, the seconds of aiming time that stuff like Snapshot and Smooth Ride give you, particularly on the Soviet tanks, they make a huge difference. Uh, every percentage you knock off or every fraction of a percentage you knock off, um, things like aiming time and reticle bloom in um, Soviet tanks in particular and including some other there's other tanks as well that benefit massively from it. a lot of the second line of British tank destroyers benefit uh, quite a lot from um, skills like snapshot and smooth ride because they have quite long aim times the Challenger the Conway the Charity are all actually have quite long aim times and I think one of the reasons I found the bottom end of that uh, grind really really difficult was because I started out in the archer with a no skill crew and I didn't um, I didn't go back to my tier my low tier premiums which I probably only had the Tog and the Excelsior at the time um, it's since then I've gotten more British premiums but I didn't go back to the lower, lower tier British premiums to train up that crew uh, a lot better and I would probably have made, my, made life a lot easier for myself if I did. I'll have no problems now though because of the uh, boot camp ops and the various um, skill boosters that have been in part of this, uh, what is this, Brotherhood and Glory or whatever uh, operation making a point and a few others have been giving you a constant stream of small numbers two or three uh, by five by six crew skill boosters and xp skill uh, boosters but i've generally been using the xp boosters as i've gotten them to help out with the grind and it has actually makes a noticeable difference when you get five or six of them together you really uh, throw on the experience we also had the fact that we had string theory and a few others so some of the last two, the, both the E75, I think, benefited from it. The Object 257 uh, was able to just race through those. So I'll be a bit longer with the T10 and the the, uh, the uh, M46, but 
when I need to get a new crew, for instance, now for both German tanks, probably, and uh, the like, crew for the AT25, to go up through that line, I um, I have bought a, it's like 40 by 6 crew experience boosters, and a bunch of by 5 crew experience boosters as well, or the by 4, I can't remember. But there's a lot of them. Uh, so I should be able to get the basic skills onto a crew pretty quickly. And that will make a big difference in the grind as well. The other thing I have found actually makes it well worthwhile while grinding as well is the um, keeping of free XP until you're um, hitting the tier 9 stock grind. Because the tier 9 stock grind is often quite long, 40, 50,000, maybe 60,000 XP before you unlock the first package. It's usually with quite a terrible gun. So if you have a pool of 50,000 or 60,000 XP that you kind of preserve and only use for tier 9s, uh, it actually makes a huge difference because this particular, all the other tier 9 grinds that I did prior to this were full on grinds from the previous tank was elite, uh, the new tank was purchased and then the it was grown from stock configuration onwards, whereas now I have not ground, gone onto the new tank, I've not purchased the new tank and I can equip it, which makes a difference as well. But I also, and I've been prepared to experiment with equipment and swap out equipment and change equipment and see what works best for me. Uh, because sometimes the equipment you need might change depending on the level of skill you have in the crew as well as anything else. But on all the recent tier 9 grinds that I have actually done, I have um, I have avoided the stock grind. I have spent free XP to get past the stock grind. And in the case of the E75, I went straight to the top turret. I didn't even bother with the first two packages. I actually went straight to the um, third package, I think, uh, which kept me the top turret. Because I knew from watching videos that the top turret was particularly soft when it was facing tier 9 and tier 10 tanks, particularly tank destroyers. It would just punch through it like it wasn't there. So I hope you found the video interesting. If people want uh, my views on stuff like crew skills and grinding out tanks and stuff like that, or me to do anything particular on it, feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will hope you enjoyed the video, as I said before. And if you've not already done so, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll catch you all again soon. Bye for now.